We're gonna try this. I'm gonna like juice it up. I mean, squish it so it gets juicy. You know when they make sushi without the raw fish? <laughs> it's like, here's cucumber roll, here's a smoked salmon roll, and like, just not the same. I want something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I'm your host, Kat Wonders, and this is episode 130. I think. <laughs> every time, every day, I think I know what I'm saying. So I just say it anyway without me doing all my research and being a little prepared. Good thing I have blue eyes and that I'm blonde haired because I have all the excuses in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 130. 130 episodes. Does that not have a ring to it? 130. It's kind of like, what time is it? 130. How many episodes have you done? 130. <laughs> um, okay. I woke up to about three inches of snow this morning, which is so random. I knew that it was supposed to snow. In fact, it's snowing right now. It's kind of, it's like, what's a combination of snow and rain? It's raining. <laughs> um, it's more, it's kind of just like sleet. Maybe that's the name I'm looking for. Um, so uh, yeah, it was on the forecast, but I was like, there's no way it's gonna actually stay because sometimes it snows. And then it just melts as it lands on the ground. But this time it didn't. And um, something happened this morning that's never happened before. I was making my coffee and a little birdie hit the window at like 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> I was like, what the? It's always like mid to late afternoon. And uh, yeah, and I couldn't see the bird. It was fine. Obviously, it hit the window and flew away, which isn't always the case. That was good. But I could see its little burp on the window. <laughs> the little tiny feather. Um, poor guy. But how did I get off talking about the bird? Oh, yeah. The snow. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've been in spring mode really hard. Cleaning, refinishing, spray painting. But I felt a little bit like, ugh, like gutted. Kind of. <laughs> Like, oh, the snow is back. You know, it's not fun snow. It's heavy, wet snow. And it's going away, but I'm just feeling shitty about it. I just don't want snow in my life right now. Anyway, <laughs> so today I'm going to make a drink that I've never made before. Again, uh, just like last episode. And it, oh no, was it the episode before? I can't remember. I took a screenshot. Oh, crap. I don't remember what it's actually called, though. It's called a michelada or michelada. I'm sure it's michelada. Um, but I'm going to do a cucumber michelada. Michelada? Michelada? <laughs> That's a lot of ladas. <laughs> uh, so um, anyway, cucumber michelada. I'm just going to call them micheladas because that just rolls off the tongue. Um, ingredients. One tablespoon of lime juice. I'm gonna try something with this lime and I don't know if this is gonna be the right type of lime. Do you, if you shop for limes, is there a specific quality the lime has to have for you to know it's a good lime? Because for me, it's tight, shiny skin on it, peel skin. Um, it's gotta be kind of tight and shiny and it's gotta be fairly firm but not too hard. This is not feeling like a really good lime. <laughs> for this. I'm gonna, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Half of a thin skinned English cucumber, which I've got this little mini one. Um, one long strip removed with a vegetable peeler, which I remembered. And uh, the remaining you want to thinly slice. One pinch of kosher salt, ice, Four ounces of Clamato, and I've got Clamato the Works. This is my favorite kind of Clamato because it's kind of spicy and it has like, I guess all the stuff that makes a Caesar taste good in it. Um, and one bottle of beer. 
and a lime wedge or a wheel. So I've got everything I need, um, but I've also got some beer hot sauce. How appropriate, beer hot sauce. So this is an old Milwaukee beer. This shit ain't cheap. This is like one of the most expensive beers you can buy here anyway in my local liquor, liquor store. Um, it is not gluten-free, but I'm only gonna be using about half of it. So I think it'll be totally fine. And I've never tried Milwaukee. So this was left at my house by some people. I got like six bottles left at my house. So what am I gonna do? Throw them away? No. <laughs> so I'm gonna try this beer just on its own first and see what we think. Watch how hard these lips leave stains on the rim. <laughs> I'm not a big beer drinker, mostly because I don't, I'm kind of gluten-free, pretty much gluten-free. Um, it's not celiac, but I just, for almost 10 years now, have just cut it out of my diet. And I drink Corona, Dos Equis. No, isn't Dos Equis beer? What am I talking about? I mean, I'm talking about beer, but I thought, is Dos Equis the one I'm thinking? Or is it? Pacifico, anyway, just corn-based beers rather than wheat or barley. Um, anyway, so I just have not really drank beer because typically I can't drink whatever beer is on hand or on tap. So we'll see how my gut feels later. <laughs> it's funny because I've sort of created my own allergy by cutting wheat out of my diet. So when I accidentally have it or I try to have it, then I suffer for a couple days. And it's not fun, but it's more deep intestinal, like ache, not really any other thing than that it's sort of, it's hard to explain and I won't get into any more detail. Bottoms up. Okay. So here are the instructions and guess what you guys today? Oh shit. I was going to get to use my muddler, this thing which I've never used, it's brand new. Okay, this this fresh take on the classic michelada makes the most juicy, most of juicy cucumbers, adding them to the drink, both muddled and sliced, and using them to garnish the glass too. Um, thread the strip of cucumber back and forth onto the cocktail pick and set aside, I almost said cocktail pit. Let's use a gold one. This is the cocktail pick. And now I'm supposed to take a little strippy strip off of this and snake it onto my skewer. Let's hope we can get a thick enough strip. Let's turn on this end. <laughs> okay. Whee! I did it. So this is just for the aesthetic portion. And... I think I want the outside of the cucumber. Okay. You guys know I learned how to knit and I got stuck in one spot and I never picked it up again. I was making a scarf and I got about this far in. It was about, <laughs> about this wide and this long. And then I got kind of stuck and then I just put it down and I never touched it again. And I'm the type of person that will buy like different colors of wool. I'll get excited and inspired before I even know how to knit. And then it just sits in a drawer somewhere. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, wet the rim of a large beer mug with real lime juice and dip in tahini to generously coat all around. So I didn't do this step because I'm not going to be drinking it right out of the glass. I'm going to be using a straw. Did I remember a straw? <gasps> yes, I did. I know I did. Where is it? If not, I think I've got bamboo straws. <laughs> Beer burp. These remind me of like blow darts because they're bamboo. I just feel like I want to put something in there. To... Okay. <laughs> So I also grabbed this because I'm going to be using it to kind of like mix everything around. I feel like I could still muddle cucumber just on top of the ice. <laughs> um, or I could take the ice out, but I don't know. 
We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, in the mug, muddle four to six cucumber slices, real lime juice, and salt until very juicy. You know, just get my workout in. Okay, so we're going to add our ingredients to this and we're going to muddle it. And we're going to do a damn good job. One, two, three, four, five. Five slices in. Can you see? Can you see here? Um. Okay, lime juice. So this is what I was going to do. So I saw on Instagram a girl take a lemon, pierce it, it through the middle with like one of these bamboo piercers and just squeeze juice out of it. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try this. I'm going to like juice it up, juice my lime. I mean, squish it so it gets juicy. And then... Let's puncture it and see if juice squeezes out. I kind of need to, I'm just gonna cut off the little, well, maybe I need that. So I punctured it with this kind of this like shish kebab skewer. Let's see if any lime juice comes out. Ready? Nope, not even one drop. <laughs> God damn it. It's okay. I'm just going to, a tablespoon of lime juice, that's a lot. And it's a fairly juicy lime, so it's really not the lime's fault. It's just the technique. It's kind of a dry lime, to be honest. I should have brought my juicer. I was confident that that method would have worked. It might work on some, like, on lemons, because she did it on with a lemon. That was maybe a teaspoon. We're just going to roll with that. <laughs> We're going to put some slices in, too, I think. Or maybe I can muddle. Um, add some salt. And uh, until very, okay, so now we're gonna model this. Ready? So the point is to get the juice out of the cucumber so it flavors the beverage. Look at us learning things. Okay, my arm's sore. That's enough muddling. Fill the mug with ice and a few more cucumber slices. So I'm gonna like add some ice. Oh, I guess in some water. Add some more cucumber slices. Five more. One, two, three, four, five. The rest of the ice and the rest of the water. Um, now, then add Clamato and beer. First, I'm going to add this hot sauce. So this Budweiser hot sauce, I got a seven pack of this for Christmas. Unbelievably, perfectly delicious and amazing. I can't really taste spice, so I put a lot in. And the Clamato is also spicy. I think it says the works, so I think it's supposed to be spicy. Um, add says it says add clamato and then beer, so I'm gonna do that in that order. I might go like this. By the way, I love clamato juice. Like I go through actually a lot of this. It's not the best because I'm just gonna mix this before I add the beer. We got all the flavors. 
You got all the flavors happening. And then beer. You know, growing up, my mom used to order beer and tomato juice. How's that look? Appetizing? I smell the cucumber. It's actually quite nice looking. So I know most of the beers on the top, but I don't want to mix it because then it's going to get like, maybe I'll just try to sip it like this. It's got mostly beer. Okay, let's give it a shot. Whoa, that is interesting. The cucumber is very strong. I shouldn't say very strong, but I really taste the cucumber. Okay, so I think that I would go for this, the odd time, instead of a Caesar. So the Caesar is super salty. I like it really spicy and salty. It's almost like a tomato soup. <laughs> Not as thick. But this is like a more refreshing, lighter Caesar. And I think Caesar uses vodka, like it uses hard alcohol. Whereas this is just beer and Clamato with some other things in it. So it's, you could probably drink more of them just as lighter on the um, alcohol content. And then I'm going to try adding more beer to see how that, and I guess the flavor of this will also change depending on the type of beer you're using. What I'm curious is if you order a Michelada in the bar, first of all, will they know what it is? Second of all, um, do they ask you what kind of beer you want in it? Or, excuse me, or is there like a standard beer that they use for these kind of drinks that involve beer? I'm curious. I like it. I think you would like it too. And I don't really didn't, I didn't measure the Clamato to beer ratio either. So you know, it was funny. I can't taste any spice whatsoever. I put quite a bit of this stuff in there, but certain hot sauces are kind of a joke. Like, I mean, some like I'm really about the flavor, but I want the, the heat too. Like I used to love Frank's red hot sauce, not because of how spicy it was, but just the flavor it gives. Like I used to, the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce for wings, the best. Oh my God, I didn't garnish it. And that cucumber almost went down the wrong pipe. Okay. Dun, 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 it says on the can, simply a great tasting, well-balanced, smooth drinking beer. Is Old Milwaukee American? Stroke Canada, Guelph, Ontario. Isn't it? Isn't it an American beer? 
I mean, it's 4.9%. I know normally American beers are like quite low in alcohol content, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not really sure. So I'm wearing sweatpants again. Not for any reason besides I was wearing a cute two matching two piece, a sweater that matches these pants. Um, and then I just wore that into my studio and it was kind of cold. So I was like, ah, uh, I'll just wear sweatpants again. You can only see me from like here up, but besides maybe over here, you can catch a glimpse of my sweatpants or when I stand up to go get shit <laughs> that I forget. Um, so yeah, the weather, it's kind of shitty, but you know what? This morning I put some chicken in the crock pot. I've never done this before. I got boneless, skinless thighs. Hold on a second. So I had this idea to, okay, <laughs> let me break this down. I, I bought a bunch of boneless, skinless chicken thighs and put them in the crock pot. I put a bit of chicken stock, a lot of mahi, maggi. It's like a liquid spice. Maybe you have heard of it. Maybe not. Maybe it's a staple in your cupboard. I don't know. I grew up with my grandparents using it all the time. My oma and opa and my mom. So it just has this like smell to it. And I'll tell you what, when I smell like that spice in my food, it just makes me feel this warm hug. That's what it does for me. Anyway, so, and then I did a bunch of spices in there and then mixed it all up, added some onions and garlic, and now I'm crocking it for like eight hours. My, what my plan is, is to then the last hour kind of before I have dinner is to create like a beautiful creamy spinach sauce to put the chicken into. So like heavier whipping cream, some really great spices, some white wine, maybe some herbs and throw the chicken in there and finish it in the cream sauce and then serve it over like a nice basmati rice. <gasps> I'm so excited. And then for a, sorry, I'm just reading messages. Um, then for, um, yeah, for like a side veg, probably something sweet to kind of, cause it's going to be quite savory. So maybe some like peaches and cream corn or some like carrots. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. But on days like this, when you're feeling like Ugh. Coming home, like walking, when I walk into my house, when I'm done here, working here, I am just going to feel great. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I could just unwind, put my hoodie back on. And actually, I still have to do some spray painting. I, you guys, I am terrible at spray painting. And I had no idea how difficult it is to spray paint something properly. <laughs> I just imagine, oh, just spray it on. No. This would be really good with, um, like, um, cause I, qu I do taste the beer and I don't dislike beer, but when it's mixed, I think I would almost prefer like a Corona instead of an old Milwaukee. <laughs> um, so I have, so I was in the hardware store and I saw these pots, uh, I, they were like not really meant for outdoor plants. They're for indoor plants. So there was no drainage hole, but they're this beautiful kind of sage, like almost like a robin's egg blue mixed with a sage green, that color, but super light. And I was like, oh, these would look so good on my deck because I just restained my deck table, the benches, and then two side tables. They're all teak. So I just sanded, restained, and that contrasting color would be so beautiful on my table. And then I was like, oh, I need those drainage holes. And I could probably get somebody to drill them out for me. But then they're, they're terracotta. Or sorry, no, not those ones. Those, those were like, a, I don't know, some sort of porcelain or something. But they were almost $40 each. And I'm like, what the frick? Like, what? That's so expensive. And then I was like, well, why can't I just spray paint the ones that I have? Because the ones that I bought, 
last year are like, I just got punched in the face by Fred the Fly. Go in timeout. <laughs> um, anyway, so the ones I had from last year are kind of like this brownish terracotta color. I don't really love them. They're very organic looking, but they don't look good on my table anymore. I, or in my mind, they don't. So then I was like, I'll just spray paint them. So I washed them really well and picked up the spray paint. Literally the first spray on this these terracotta pots was totally clear. And I was like, oh no, I bought like a top coat. And I'd shaken it, trust me. I shook that freaking thing for like five minutes. My arms were sore to make sure everything was mixed in the can. Anyway, and uh, so I sprayed on, it's clear. And I was like, frick, but I didn't know. When you first start a spray can, it's gonna come out like clear liquid first. Not all the time maybe, but this time it definitely was. Then I saw some color come out, but the color was so sheer. And I'm like, oh shit, cause this, my pots are like a dark brown and I'm spraying in this light, like eggshell color. <laughs> you know, the color is exactly, certain chickens lay green or blue eggs, that color, but I'm leaning more blue. Anyway, so. <laughs> But then I kind of got the swing of it and I noticed that the angle that I was holding the can was making a difference with how much pigment was coming out. Anyway, it took a long freaking time and three quarters of a can to spray paint and fully coat these pots. Luckily it's quick drying so it says dries in five minutes but because you're spraying terracotta and it's so absorbent it just seemed to dry like immediately so I had lots of time to. Now they're perfect and beautiful and I love them but I was like that can is Spray paint was probably like $8 and I definitely saved a lot of money by doing it this way. Will it poison my plants? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Um, one quick second here. Oh, huh, good. Love when I miss appointments, but I'll tell you what, I'll miss appointments for this any day <laughs> to get up and leave and come back. Not going to happen. One thing I will say, those little muddled bits are getting stuck in the straw. Hmm. I just need nice weather because this would be really nice on like a patio, like with some appetizers before dinner. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be heading west in a while. <laughs> um not I mean just driving about four or five hours and uh the weather should be decent so I'm looking forward to that um oh my gosh you guys though but the amount of work I've been doing and I, I don't know I think I just also like my cycle will determine what the kind of energy I have the mood I'm in uh but pair that with like good weather I'm unstoppable the, yesterday uh, oh man, I got so much done. And then I was like, I'm going to go for a run. So after everything, and I was even after dinner, I was still raking and still cleaning and feeling great. The sun was out yesterday and it was beautiful. Went for a run. It wasn't anything significant. It was like maybe two kilometers or something, <laughs> but it was still, I got out and I ran and, um, yeah, some days are just like oh, so productive and you're just like, and then other days, like today, <laughs> no, today's been productive, but it's just been harder to get things done. Just dragging my feet a little and kind of, you know, up and down and around. And... But I got stuffed food in the crock pot, so that helps. That's a definite plus. All right. So I've been recently discovered a show on YouTube it's called Last Meal, and it's where this guy, it's, I think the network is called, um, oh, geez, I can't remember. It's like mystery culinary, culinary mystery or something. Anyway, so basically, it's where this guy interviews celebrities or, you know, different comedians or other YouTubers, and before the interview, they asked whoever they're interviewing, what would be their preferred last meal? So I always call it like a death row meal where it's like the last meal before you're executed. What do you want to eat? We've all thought about it before, I'm sure. 
But if you could eat one thing before you die, what would it be? But instead of one thing, they will get you whatever you want. So they want like a big order. The last one that I watched was Bert Kreischer. So he's a comedian if you don't know who he is. I think he's really, he's like right in the comedy realm like that I watch on YouTube. So he's part of like that group and I, I he's quite entertaining. So I watched it and um, he ordered like seven different things. And it was funny because it's like one of the thing was called, like considered prison food. It was almost like he was just retasting things from his childhood. And then he ordered something because his he's like Dutch Ukrainian or Dutch his Dutch heritage and his mom used to make this one thing and it was like square and fried. And I've never seen it before because my Oma and Opa never made it, but it, it might be from a different region of Holland possibly. And I can't remember what it was called, but it got me thinking if I had my last meal on earth, what would it be? And I have thought about it before and I've always said like in the past sushi, but that was like when I was a kid because I loved sushi, sushi so much, but we could never afford it. So it was a rare thing that we got sushi. And then my dad would try to make sushi sometimes and it was, but it's never the same, you know, when they make sushi without the raw fish, <laughs> it's like, here's a cucumber roll. Here's a smoked salmon roll. I'm like, just not the same. Um, and the types of sushi that I like are like gnarly raw fish, like big ass eggs and whatever I can like just the, the deepest depths of the ocean. You know what I've never tried? And I've seen it multiple times pop up recently on my Instagram feed is sea urchin. You know where they like, it's raw and if they have like, it looks like yellow, like uncooked meat underneath and they just, <laughs> it's raw, <laughs> duh. Um, and then it's a delicacy and people just love it. And I'm like, what does it taste like? And who thought of that? <laughs> I mean, you gotta be pretty damn hungry. I think that's probably how most things that you eat are discovered. It's like somebody's hungry enough to try it. Like balut, the the duck egg like the fetus and the duck egg it's not called a fetus is it embryo it's basically a fully formed duck about to hatch that i don't know how they kill they kill it or something or they boil it and then they eat it that way and the the way to eat it is you crack it open cuz it's got the shell on it and then you suck out the juice first and then you just eat the duck and i'm like what about the bill like but you know, in the same way that you have like canned salmon and the bones are just soft, you know what I mean? You can crunch through like the little vertebrae and stuff. I would assume that the loot is very similar. How hard can the, you know, the bones be anyway of a little baby duck, but still, uh, it's a delicacy in the Philippines and I think probably other places too. But like, what about, what is that? Oh yeah. Like hundred year old eggs. They're like buried and fermented for a long time. They turn like black. What are they called? Anyway, just like, gross. You gotta be freaking hungry to try that shit. My garnish fell in. It's okay. Um, oh yeah, so let's get to my final, my last meal. I almost feel like I would go the nostalgia route. So my... Oma and Opa and my mom too would make um, stumput, which is a Dutch dish where you take carrots, like you boil carrots as well as potatoes and you mash them all together. And it's funny because when I was little, I used to hate it. I hated it. I would much prefer just mashed potatoes and like gravy. What the hell? Anyway, I guess construction is happening downstairs that I don't know about. <laughs> anyway, um, so as a kid, I just wouldn't, you know, I would much prefer just mashed potatoes. Anyway, so it was mashed potatoes, 
with carrots mashed into it. So it was looked kind of like a mixture of white and orange. And then my mom would make a mustard butter sauce. So she would basically, I don't know if it, I don't know the ratio. It was like 50, 50, but I made ham over Easter and I made a mushroom butter sauce for it. And I did literally like 50% butter, 50% mustard. So good. And, but I was like, oh, I should have made stump it with this meal because as I was, as I got older and had it very seldom, it became more and more special. Can you hear that? That is quite the impact drill happening. And I'm not sure how well you can hear that. Hopefully it's not louder than my voice because I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so anyway, I would have, I don't know what the, just not today. stairs <laughs> so leading like the steps up to my garage right now are they're um just blocks of wood and then the ground underneath is unstable so like I have to really watch because they teeter as I go up and um, I'm getting stairs right now not so unhappy but it's going to be one more screw <laughs> like I said you might not really be able to hear it but I can Thank God. What was I talking about? Stumpfoot. Um, so for nostalgia purposes, if I knew I was about to die, because really the enjoyment for the moment of a food that you love brings you joy. But the nostalgia of a food brings you like warm feelings and would be a little bit more... I guess, what would it, what, oh, there's so much going on right now. People are pulling up every time I feel like I don't, I need to change the time that I film because oh, I can remember. Anyway, um, I just feel like I would love to have a warm, fuzzy feeling before I died. <laughs> so I would say stumpet with mustard sauce. The painters are here. For what? Now I have to deal with them. I'm don't, I'm not, they can, they can suck it. <laughs> uh, I paid them with, I think they might want like photos or something. That's not going to happen. Okay. So let me get back to Stumpwood mustard sauce. Okay. Then... I would love, oh my God, I had the, this mochi, these mochi balls in South Korea that were just magical. And maybe it was like the, just a experience. So again, nostalgia, I would like a few of those. They were like the matcha mochi balls, which is like a rice paste, but the way that they were made and the texture and everything was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. So I'd like to try those again. Orange popsicle, like a classic orange popsicle takes me back to my childhood. And this one time I was in Germany and I was at this little tiny restaurant. This was in Bad Neustadt. This little tiny restaurant on some side street. Really, really nice in there actually, like very old feeling, but really kind of chic and almost like, it was almost like a French restaurant or something. But they gave me a little appetizer of three different flavors of soup, which is a really good idea for an appy. And one was the tomato base. One was like a cream soup and the other was like a puree. The center soup was a mushroom soup. The best soup I've ever had. It was like a white wine, creamy mushroom soup. I've tried to recreate the soup. I've never been able to. And I don't know. And again, it was like the people that I was with. It was a beautiful summer day. The environment was amazing. Maybe our serve, I don't remember, but it was like, the you know, so like 
environment has a major impact on how your food tastes, how it makes you feel. So I would go for those. Stump it with mustard sauce, matcha mochi, <laughs> and orange popsicle for dessert. So that'll be last. And I'd have that mushroom soup that I had that day. Don't remember the name of the restaurant. Don't remember the real name of the soup, but that's, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna add some more Clamato because the beer is getting a little flat and I love Clamato. Heck, where's the vodka? <laughs> Let's spike this baby. The cucumber is a nice addition because cucumber can go into sweet drinks or savory drinks. It just has this unique flavor that you can mask either way. It's not like a strawberry, or I guess strawberry sweet anyway, but like there's what other vegetable is there that you can, well, that's not true. I guess carrot can be the same. Like I make salty carrots and I make sweet carrots with like brown sugar and molasses. So, but anyway, cucumber, that's why you see it in drinks all the time. Very versatile. Okay, what else did I write down to talk about? So last meal. Also in the comments down below, I want you to tell me what your last meal would be. And it could be as many things as you want. But really think hard. Really think hard about what it would be. I want to I wanna know. Uh, I did my first Instagram live yesterday. And um, I think about, well, <laughs> if you're not following me on Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you are cat.wonders. So I'm at cat.wonders, the little A symbol for those of you who don't know. And uh, you can check me out. You can check out my live. I just popped on there because I just finished filming and I was like, hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today? Let me know. Um sort of talking about like how proud I am of myself for doing all this yard work. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <clears throat> okay, so this is actually really funny. So I was talking about um, a few episodes ago, talking about roulette and how I played roulette for the first time. And roulette was always so intimidating because I just never understood how it worked. Even if I watched somebody play, I wouldn't understand how they won. I just never took the time to learn. But then I'm, I'm always like, I write things down when I'm on Instagram and like I get inspired. And so I know it seems like I'm on Instagram all day. I'm really not. I just kind of like will get inspired with the odd post and I'll write it down to talk about here on my podcast. But there is an Instagram page dedicated to giving you tips and teaching you tricks about gambling and stuff that you would never like that your odds of winning are like 80, 20. So like you have 80% chance of winning if you play this way every time. And he gave this, um, this tip on playing roulette and how you cover so many bases with being strategic with where you're placing your chips that you have like a, it's like a 70, 30% chance of winning every time. And he did it right there at the casino and he won, of course, and, uh, he made like a 50% profit. And I was like, wow, wow. of course, it's 70, 30, still not a hundred percent chance of winning. But if you can increase your odds and you know that you can, wouldn't it be a lot more fun to gamble? Whereas you're just like having a few drinks, you're like, oh, put it all on red or whatever. You know, then you have a 50-50 chance. But if I was like, I wonder if this really works and I start winning, I'd be like, I think I have a problem. <laughs> if I get really good at something, I, I want to do it all the time. And so if I started winning all the time at gambling, then I'd be like, I'm just going to go get some milk at the grocery store. Come home three hours later. Where were you? I just went gambling. <laughs> but look, and just like bring out suitcases of cash. I want to know if you've ever won significantly at gambling. Like what's the most you've won? And you could also include scratch and win tickets. I know somebody who's won $1,000 twice on Gold Rush scratch and win tickets. The most I've won, I think, is $50 on a scratch and win, which is nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> is that the same? Um, oh, and then also 
the Nickelodeon logo. So there's this all this conspiracy or not conspiracy, but there's this Nickelodeon's been exposed for mistreating some of their actors and child actors. And there's been some fishy stuff going on. And there's been a recent documentary about one of the directors of a few shows and how he was inappropriate and things like that. Who's surprised? Who would think the director of a children's show could be inappropriate? Hmm. You know? Anyway, uh, so, and this is wild, and maybe this is really completely unrelated, but I doubt it. The Nickelodeon logo looks kind of like an orange splat. Um... And it's been that way for a long time. Somehow, in some strange turn of events or some strange coincidence, Epstein's Island is in the same shape as the Nickelodeon logo, including the little dot that's off the coast of this island that's in suspiciously the same spot. Um, what the hell? Like, it, the, like I, I, I do watch and I do, I'm interested in some conspiracy theories because you have to sort of be curious about how things are really working in this world these days, who's in power. Um, but it's just like, did you just not, did you think nobody would ever figure it out? And I mean, if it was established before Epstein got caught, you know, then... Yeah, maybe you think, oh, nobody will ever make this connection because we're just going to live the rest of our lives, live in this dream, this in this dream world, you know, where nobody gets caught and everybody's living their best life. Uh, no. So I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, it blows my mind, some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I am getting... 7,000 text messages. So I'm just going to turn my phone over. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to this chicken, you guys. This cream chicken. I Okay, also the other day I made fettuccine Alfredo from scratch, except for I used spaghetti noodles. <laughs> and that was the only fail. I only had spaghetti noodles and no fettuccine noodles. But I went online just to kind of figure out, oh, easy fettuccine alfredo i did not realize how much butter it's like 50 50 butter and cream fettuccine alfredo if you're ordering it anywhere just know it's going to be like at least 800 calories worth of i didn't know this i just i don't know what i was thinking because it's not only butter cream it's parmesan cheese and um i just anyway i didn't give a shit I made it and it was so good that I was like every because I have this one restaurant that I order gluten-free fettuccine alfredo it's always fusilli noodles which I don't like not fusilli sorry penne which is like the tubes I don't like that because the sauce doesn't really like when you're having fettuccine alfredo I want the fettuccine noodles I want it to coat each noodle I don't want a hollow spot in my noodle you know what I'm saying? I don't want like a dry spot on my noodle. So that's where penne is like, no, it's just not it. But the sauce is so good, I order it. I cracked the code on the sauce and now I know how to make fettuccine alfredo. In fact, I'm so confident in my recipe, not my recipe, by the way, I just figured out a recipe that was doable for me. <laughs> uh, I would make it for guests. That's how good it is. So yay me. Boo-hoo to my booty. <laughs> Me just making fettuccine alfredo once a week and just like, what's happened to Cat Wonders? <laughs> I have said, literally, it'd be easy to change my name if I did gain a bunch of weight. I go from Cat Wonders to Fat Wonders. Like that. Barely have to change anything. <laughs> just one letter. <laughs> no, that's rude. And to be honest, if I really did get, you know, for whatever reason, gain a ton of weight. I would just roll with it. <laughs> Literally, I roll here, roll here. <laughs> um, no shame in that. Just as long as you're healthy. It's funny because in town, I know a few larger girls that are extremely active. They 
run, they bike, they run marathons, they are doing something all the time. And they're still like really large. And with the amount of, and I mean, I follow some of these people on like, they're always active. And like, it's not always as simple as like, get exercise, you know, I mean, a lot of it needs to be diet as well. But like, there are a lot of these people that are, have uh, quite a bit of weight on them that w- get a lot of exercise. It's like all they do is exercise. So it's kind of fun, like weird how that does work that way. But anyway, off on that tangent, these cucumbers. Mm-hmm. The cucumbers that I grow in my garden, I have to freaking peel them. But I haven't really tried to grow like New England or New English long English, (laughs) whatever cucumbers. Um, so, but the ones, I mean, the ones I grow are so delicious and you guys, my greenhouse, somehow it just grows tomatoes, cucumbers, and a few other things like it's magic. And I know I've had, I've had greenhouses before. There's something different about this greenhouse. The way, so the greenhouse we bought, I think it's the company's called Planta, Planta Greenhouses. And I believe it's a Canadian company. It took forever to put together, like forever. But the type of plastics that, plastic that's used allows only a certain um, UV light through. It doesn't allow UVA and UVB. I think it just allows like UVB and then not the A. So it doesn't burn your... It doesn't burn your plants. I don't know how it works, um, but it's magical and highly recommend. Uh, not sponsored, <laughs> but the beauty of, of it is, is I ordered uh, mine is like twelve feet long, but you can order sections and make it longer if you want. You just have to unscrew the end and then add more sections and screw the end back on. It's crazy, and also I have automatic vents that open up. Once the temperature gets to a certain point, the vents automatically open. However the hell that works, I don't even know. But they're just like a really interesting feature to have. And like if you do have to go away for a few days in the summertime, then at least you can know they're not going to be cooking to death in there. There's going to be some airflow. Pretty great. Excuse me. Well, (laughs) this has been an interesting podcast. Lots of interruptions. Um, It made me feel better, though. And it's not just the beer. It's your company. I love doing this, sitting down with you and enjoying talking about random things. No rhyme or reason, typically. Luckily, I write a few things down. Otherwise, we just be sitting here like crickets. Also, speaking of crickets, a cricket escaped from my little cricket habitat because I use fresh crickets to feed my spiders. My spiders don't create webs and trap insects they jump on their prey so i hand feed them which is so fun anyway you can look it up but i and i'll probably share once i have good footage i can share with you too anyway one of the little buggers escaped and is in my basement literally chirping away every night and to be honest it's in my basement so it's far enough away from my bedroom that it just seems sounds like i'm camping and there's like a lot <laughs> But every time you get close to it, because you you follow the noise, right? And crickets are so incredibly loud. I just can't believe how they make this noise by like rubbing their like hind wings together or whatever. So you can pinpoint kind of where he's at. But then as soon as you get like five feet away, he stops. He's like smart. And I'm sure he's big now because I buy two wee crickets to feed my spideys and he's, he's like six weeks, maybe eight weeks now. (laughs) He's huge. Just living his best life. And I'm sure he's got food down there, crumbs from like under the couch or something. Who knows what the hell he's eating, but I know crickets are hardy. They last a long time. So he's probably eating other insects because they're a bit cannibalistic. Like if a cricket dies, I leave it in there because the other ones will just eat it. It's kind of yucky, but it's the circle of life. (laughs) Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 130 and uh, leave your comments down below. Please subscribe. If you are not subscribed, it would be awesome to have you on my Kitty Looker crew and um, like this video if you enjoyed it. 
it helps the algorithm and lets me just know that you like my stuff. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. I'm Cat Wonders. This is Kitty Licker. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.